Only mode. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone. My name is Elaine Igama with LexisNexis. I'm a sales support consultant for Law Prediscovery and the ED Analyzer program. Um, also today, we have Tammy Fan who will be answering any questions you might have during the webinar and will also be um, answering questions towards the very end. Uh, for today's webinar, we'll be covering uh, mainly the new functionalities in Law 6.3 and any other modifications or features we've added uh, for this version. Uh, we did release 6.3.37 um, last week, um, so we'll be covering all the, again, the new functionalities. At this time, I'd like to make sure that the audio is working properly, so if you can go to your um, chat window and just type, type in there that you can hear me okay and that you can view my screen, that would be great, and then we can start shortly. Thank you. Also at this time, I'd like to point out the questions uh, window where you'll be able to type any questions. And it looks like we do have one attendee saying, you can hear me OK. Thank you. Um, so again, feel free to type up any questions you have. We'll, we'll try to cover those towards the end, um, or we'll stop along the way and, and read those questions out loud and answer them as we go through all the new features in law. Okay, so it looks good. Okay, at this time, I'd like to go in and begin our webinar. And we'll start by covering uh, the new functionalities or features that they've added in the ED loader. Um, so this is Law Prediscovery. I already have a case set up that I've created um, where I've loaded in some documents. Uh, the first feature that we've implemented in version 6.3 is the metadata option that we've added in the ED loader. So I'll just take you to our ED loader here. And there's some lagging going on on my machine, so I do apologize in advance for that. All right, so this is the Law Electronic Discovery ED loader. If I go to my settings, you'll notice under metadata that we've now added the detection for hidden slides for Microsoft PowerPoint files as well as the speaker notes for Microsoft PowerPoint files. So these two um, are two new options that we've added for our metadata settings. I went ahead and enabled those and brought in the documents previously. And this is where I'll show you where those documents are. This is a PowerPoint file that, that I created with hidden slides and speaker notes. So what I'm going to do is bring up these documents in my grid view and give you an idea on what these, uh, let's see here. There's my doc extension, PowerPoint. I'm going to pull up the field that indicates whether I have um, extended properties or not. So this is that field here. When you see a Y value, that indicates that we do have some sort of an extended property there. And to view that, you can simply go to the View menu, hit Extended Properties, and that will show you whether for instance, for this PowerPoint file, we know that's a PowerPoint file. We know that there aren't any comments in there. We know that we have a hidden slide and some speaker notes or notes within that PowerPoint file. Same thing for these other e-docs. If there were any track changes, for instance, for this Word document, you'll see a no or yes value for those documents. Extended or custom properties may also show up. And you probably noticed that within the metadata tab earlier when I went in there to show you. And these are new features, but those have all been there, and I just wanted to point that out as well. So that is one of the first, we'll go ahead and hit save, first features that they've added in Law 6.3.37. We did also add support for um, an additional archive file type, and that's zipx file. All five documents came or were extracted from a zipx file. And I can show you that by going into um, so a root folder. Oh. Go back to our grid view. Here's your ED folder. 
So within this test folder, I did have a ZipX archive in there, and that's how I know that all these documents came from there. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit close for that one. The next feature, or this was more of a, a modification, in version 6.2, we introduced the ability to convert your native files directly into PDFs rather than going in, running a TIFF conversion, running the OCR process, and using a specific um, output, or uh, the OCR would hit in text as your output, you can now bring in your native records through the ED loader and then use the EZ PDF SDK as your active driver. So this was introduced in version 6.2. In also in version 6.2, if you were to endorse your documents after you've converted them into PDFs and would try exporting them, it would turn those PDFs into image-only PDFs um, so that that workflow uh, would become a little bit tedious because then you'd have to go back into law and, and actually OCR the documents. So in 6.3, we made the modification to um, go ahead and convert your native records into PDFs once you've converted them. If you have to endorse, you can endorse your documents as well and then export them directly into PDFs. And they, were still, they will still come out as searchable PDFs. So that's the biggest change. And I can show you a quick um, example here. We'll go ahead and just run a quick query on a subset of documents from my case. So it lets me. So I created a tag field called produce. And we'll go ahead and run a query based on that tag field. We have about 12 documents here. And what I've done for this set earlier is I went in, went to my TIFF PDF options, used the EZ PDF SDK, and ran that process. So I went ahead and enabled my TIFF PDF conversion and hit begin, ran through it, and you'll notice down here that my image extension is showing as PDF rather than TIFF. You'd typically see TIFF if you went ahead and used the LexisNexis image driver. So from my grid view, I'm going to export all 12 documents. And we'll just go ahead and use the, the basic PDF conversion multi-page format. And then we'll do the doc ID. And I'm going to browse to my export folder here to my desktop. Oops, give me just a second here. Okay. I'll hit finish. And then we'll create this export of 12 records. So yes, we want to open the output folder, and this is on my desktop. And you'll notice the PDF that we produced from law. If I were to go ahead and launch one of these PDFs, and view the content, I can search Tom, and they are searchable. Um, so the last step I didn't actually do for that set is to endorse. If I want to go back, endorse the set, and re-export, those PDFs will still be searchable. And so that's one of the major changes that we uh, created in version 6.3. Okay, so we'll close that. And at this time, I, I'm going to pause to see if we do have any questions. Uh, Tammy, if we have any questions for now. Uh, we do have one. What is the metric for speed of the easy PDF? Is it considerably slower than using the LexisNexis TIFF driver? The metric speed for that, I haven't done any benchmarking, um, but it will be a little bit slower than the LexisNexis image driver from what I've seen. Um, I wasn't sure if Chad had any metrics. Chad, do you have any metrics on that? It's, it's uh, not necessarily going to be a, a lot slower. Think about it in consideration of, of um, eliminating the extra process of having to cr uh, OCR the documents um, to create a searchable PDF. So you're eliminating an additional step. It may take a little bit slower, um, but the exact number is not going to be substantial enough to outweigh the, the positives um, to, to run the OCR after the fact. Um, the caveat here is that if you have an EDOC that has extracted text, 
it will become a searchable PDF immediately. But if you have an, an image-only file with no text, you'll have to OCR anyway. So um, think about it in those terms. But as far as the benchmark is concerned, it's, it's not going to be substantial um, as far as slowness is concerned. Thank you, Chad. Okay, and I think we are good on the questions for now. Um, so go ahead and resume with the with the webinar. The the next thing we've added for Law 63 is the ability to run. Um, we've added a run command um, or integrated that directly into Law called the Apply Duplicate Relationship. So what this option does is if you have duplicates throughout your case and you're needing to search or simply look for the custodians of those duplicates, this will give you um, the dupe cus names or dupe cus pass fields. And those are, uh, we've added four new fields actually in this build. I'm going to take you to the modify fields really quick just to show you. Um, we've added the duplicate custodian names, the cus custodian path, which, which will give you the path of those duplicates, parent name, and then parent path. So the difference between um, these two would be uh, whether you were deduping on a custodian level or on a global level. So two out of the four will always be populated if you run the duplicate relationship command. And I'm going to run that really quick here just to give you an idea on how that works. It's going to tell us how many um, total updates there were. And if I hit OK, go to my grid view. And because I deduped on a global level, we should see the parent name and then the dupe parent path. I'm going to bring those fields up. Okay. We'll just go ahead and exclude um, the blank values here for now. I'm going to move these over so it's easier to see. And you'll notice my parent path, my duplicate parent names, and then there should be some with more than one custodian. So if there's a duplicate somewhere in my case where, or maybe not, OK. If document ID 127 and say 128 were also, also came from the Stacy Dixon custodian, you'll see the semicolon and then it'll say Stacy Dixon in there as well. Um, so it'll let us know where these duplicates are coming from um, as far as the custodian goes. And that's, how, and that's what that tool does in 6.3. OK, so we'll close that. And another feature we've added um, for those of you who are um, constantly working with Lotus Notes or NSF files, we've added the functionality to go ahead and, and be able to open uh, Lotus and review from there. So we've added the Lotus Notes review mode and then the review parent emails natively um, options. If I go into Lotus Notes review, these are emails that came from my uh, NSF that I've loaded in here. So you'll see the judytownsend.nsf file. If I click on this htm, well, it's going to try and launch Lotus Notes for us. And it should come up here soon. OK, so this is Lotus Notes. And I'm running Lotus Notes version 8.5. So the benefit of this feature here is that this will allow you to compare Lotus Notes items against what you're seeing in law. For instance, this email here that we've opened up, this is item number three in law. I can see what this email um, looks like in Lotus Notes versus what, let's say, the extracted text will look like in law. So you do have that ability to do the comparison side by side if you have multiple screens. Um, you can do all of that as well. So if I go to the next email, it should follow me. And this is that same email that I just clicked on. OK, so we'll hit close there. And the next um, 
modification that we've done for 6.3 is that we are now supporting e-drawings 2013, and that's 432-bit only at this time. Okay. And I'm going to wait till this loads here. Julian, can you just repeat what you said? With Lotus Notes? Mm -hmm. OK. So the Lotus Notes functionality, the review mode, allows you to launch the documents within Lotus Notes. And that, that will allow the user to review the documents natively from the native application, which is Lotus Notes. And then also look at the contents and law that you have. Um, so that's, I mean, that's the, the benefit of having that feature available in law. Uh, we are now supporting eDrawings 2013 32-bit as one of the source applications for uh, TIFF conversion in law. And it looks like we had a few other questions here. So the question for um, TIFFing using the easy PDF, if it will result in a PDF or a TIFF image or both, um, the answer for now is currently one or the other. You can't do both. And then for exporting to a single searchable PDF, um, Elaine, do you know for sure? I would say the answer is no, because we are using the extracted text as the searchable PDF. So um, the extracted text wouldn't be single page. And then um, we're also unable to export to a PDF portfolio at the moment. Um, there's no way that I know for sure to disable the grid view from closing and asking you to save it. No, there's no way to disable the manage grid views. That's just part of the functionality that if you make a change to it, we want to make sure that you're aware that, OK, you made a change to your default. Are you sure you want to, do you want to save it or not? So, um, there's no default option for that. Uh, as far as your PDF portfolio is one concerned, is uh, you, you 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 technically could uh, I would I don't know if it'd be considered a PDF portfolio, but you mean you you can merge your parents and attachments um, on an export um, if you're going straight to PDF. But as far as creating a PDF portfolio with natives in it, that's that's a negative. Good question. We could probably pass that up as a feature request. Yeah, and, and it's it's considered a bookmark. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. And I do apologize. It looks like I can't launch the application at the moment. So give me one second here. And there was one more feature that I wanted to show here. Um, and we may just end up having to, I'll show you guys a, a PowerPoint rather than um, going through that within law, because it looks like my machine is, is actually not wanting to launch law at the moment. So I do apologize about that. Um, let's see here. So we went over the new index fields that we've added. I mentioned the duplicate custodian name, the path, and then the parent name, and then the parent path as well. Um, the last option that we've added in 6.3 would be the uniqueness column that we've um, integrated within the full text search uh, interface in law. And I uh, can't show you that functionality at the moment, but that, that, that's been added as well in 6.3. An example on how that uniqueness will um, work in law is if you were to run a full text search, um, say using three different names, you would want to run Jill and not Nazir and not John. So it's excluding those two key terms after that first term. Um, we've also added the option to uh, go ahead and run your, your full text search report 
and restrict that based on a specific tag in law. So you can go in, create a tag field, maybe run your first search term or your, your uh, phrases, and, and then create um, your tags based on that search, and then go back to your full text report and run a, dif a different search based on that tag set of documents. Um, so you can do all of that within the Query Builder. And then the last, I think that may have been it. We went over the eDrawings year 2013 Lotus Notes, and that is pretty much it for the, the 6.3 feature. Let me go ahead and bring up uh, one more thing here. Okay. Um, at this time, I'm, I'm going to just show, again, our account team, or if, if you are already familiar with who your account representative is, feel free to contact them if you don't have the current version or the current build. Uh, for West Coast, we have Aaron Sibolowski. For Midwest and Southeast, we have Keith Nolte. Northeast, we have Donna Egan. And then for West of the Mississippi or law firms under 50 attorneys, we have Roxanne Hipwell. Uh, all government law firms. James Orcutt, and then all corporate would be Ryan Barris. And if um, you're in Canada, that would be Ingrid Fazio. And so these are their, their contact information. Um, or let us know if, if you do have uh, any questions on the new features or if you'd like to have the new version and you're still not currently running that. I'm going to uh, go and take this time again to go over any questions that we might have. Let's see here. For the uniqueness question, it is Jill, not Nazir, and not John. If you were to search for all three, it would be in the query builder. And Elaine, is your machine lagging? A client wanted to know if you can show the dupe cuss name. OK, let me see if I could try and launch it again. To answer the question about the, the uniqueness, do that search for you? Yes, the uniqueness will do that search for you. And and if Elaine wants me to um, show that, I certainly can. Okay. Yeah, if you have it, do you have it pulled up, Chad? I can switch it over to you and maybe we can show them that really quick. Yeah, I can bring up a couple searches here. Okay. All right, you guys should see my screen right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and I just imported a bunch of searches in here. So we're running our searches uh, within this data set here. Um, this is just a, an NRI data set that I used to import some, some test data in on. Um, you can see I've got Death Star, Scaling, and so on and so forth. So essentially the premise behind the uniqueness is that whatever term you have selected here, we're going to identify the uniqueness based upon those, the, the individual search term. So if I click on Calculate Uniqueness, it's going to go through and calculate the uniqueness very, very, very quickly. Okay, you can see you can see that you didn't even you didn't even realize what happened. It just it, it moved real quick. Okay, so now even if I uncheck one of these, it actually allows you to change the uniqueness. So I, even though I select it on boot, click on calculate uniqueness, they may have changed a little bit. So I've got what um, six two six and ninety one. So if I redo that. Um, so they're very, very similar. So if I was to add maybe even another one, let's so let's go, let's go Jill in here. Let's go, um, let's go John. 
and then the zero. Okay. If I could spell that, would be great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring those back up and run those searches. So here they are here. Um, if I calculate my uniqueness, I've got those here as well. So if I uncheck these, I don't know if it's going to verify exactly what we have there. Um, so Jill is alone by itself showing up seven times outside of um, um, John and Nazir. So based on, on um, Elaine's example, Jill, not John and not Nazir. Okay, I hope that hope that helps with the explanation on, in that regard. Then we actually can save these out, so we can save this report out. So um, let me drop this on my desktop here, and we'll bring this up. And we do have the the unique documents um, within that data set, as, or within just the search term request as well. And we list the terms in gigabytes and size and so on. Okay, um, I hope that answers the question. Uh, the other one we had was that we can restrict the search terms based on a specific tag. So if you've tagged a series of documents um, within your data set, you can specify that tag. I don't have a tag in there, but if I was to go back and um, let's create a tag, let's say um, FT tag. Okay, so if I create a tag field, I'll put that at the top there. Um, no. Good. Um, now if I hop into here, this is now going to be available to show me that set of documents that could have potentially been tagged as that um, FT tag that would specifically search on just those um, tagged documents versus the entire data set. Um, so that's been a big, huge request as well. So a lot of clients like to you know, call down their data based upon what we have here, based upon your search terms, and tag those, and then run a search just on those tags, and we've added that as well. Um, what other question was there while we're sitting in here? Cool. Thank you, Chad. Um, I think we were at, so we showed the Duke, did we show the uh, Duke custodian name populated? I think I, I showed it earlier, but if we could pull that up again. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can apply my, um, uh, looks like I'm running a dedupe, intercase dedupe on that one, so if I pop into Enron. I don't know if I will have no duplicates were detected. That's, um, let's see what we have here. Okay. In the meantime, um, we'll just I'll just move on to the okay. next question for now. Can we go into near dedupe and email threading? At this time, we we aren't quite showing that yet, and I think um, in the near future we'll, we'll be eventually showing that, but not at this time. That's correct. Um, we're, we're refining a few things with it uh, just to get um, familiarized with it, but we will be showing a webinar based on um, Polaris near dupe, smart or smart duper, and um, email threading eventually. Okay, next question. How would you handle the export conversion of native PDFs and make them searchable when they were not searchable originally? Okay. Well, so, okay, go ahead, Chad. Uh, I want to make sure I understand oh, okay. the question. And if I, yeah, and if, if you can elaborate more a little bit on that, I think what I'm getting is they had natives that did not have extracted text, so would they, how would they be able to export that as searchable PDFs if they came in without text to begin with? Is that correct? We'll just wait for the confirmation on that. Um, and that, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer that. In that scenario, if, if you were to bring in native documents into law and you knew that your end goal was to produce them as searchable PDF and you didn't have extracted text in the beginning, then you would want to make sure that you, you have extracted text. So the, the workflow for being able to import native convert them into PDFs, and then export them as searchable PDFs, you, you have to have extracted text or some kind of text in there. Otherwise, you, you won't have anything at the very end. Um, so if you don't have extracted text, you may want to you know, make that a part of your QC process where you go in and isolate the documents that came in without extracted text and then go ahead and run the 
um, TIF conversion and then your OCR process for those documents. Right. So this document here does not have any, any text. Um, uh, other, it's just a Halloween invite, apparently. Uh, so if I was to go ahead and, and TIF convert this one um, using the SDK, it doesn't have any extracted text, therefore it's not going to be searchable. So if I click on Begin and convert that, I would have to OCR it there afterwards in order to get the searchable PDF. Okay, that's the downside to it. And, and the OCR setting for searchable PDFs would be Adobe with hidden text. Correct. Correct. So coming back to this document, now I have, my, I have my document. In order to get the text, if I could be on this Halloween invite, would be to OCR it. Now, if for any reason for this document here, let's go ahead and uh, hammer out this one. Uh, since this document has, I don't want that. Uh, since this document has searchable text already, I can come through and say batch process, TIFF convert. Let me make sure I got this set up here. Okay, I, I've, I've changed nothing in these settings other than uh, SDK making it sure it's there. I click begin, run that process, and then you'll see if I come back up to my my text here, <clears throat> you can see that it does say extracted, but if I was to go ahead and run that export, it would update that and let me know that, hey, these documents are, um, have been, here it is, it is right here. Okay. So if I was to come out to and identify these documents here in the image archive, that would give me the indication um, of a searchable PDF. So if I properties, So here's the first one. Um, this is a non-searchable PDF, as you can tell. And now if I was to open up this PDF 2, it is searchable. And I can search on just about anything on in here. So if I, let's say I want to search for the word Tim. There's Tim right there. So you can see that the differences between um, those two documents, one had extracted text, one did not. Okay. Hope that helps out with understanding that workflow process. The easiest way to identify those documents that do or do not have extracted text would be to show your text X status field and filter based on that. So your C's are going to indicate that you have extracted text and your non-C's are going to say, okay, you need, you need to find out and identify those documents. No, they don't have extracted text or there is an error, meaning a DLL executable as such. Chad, can you take that Halloween document, OCR it with Adobe with hidden text and export it to show them that it's searchable? Uh, yeah. Cancel search. Oh my goodness. Um, it should have been number five right there. Oops. Had that condition. Execute. That's the PDF. That's uh, the Halloween document. It has an image. Good. It may not be the greatest simply because it's uh, what you see is what you get. Um, but here's uh, you can either use XProvision or, or or Adobe. Um, I have a hidden text. Yeah. Click on Begin. I'm going to do just that document. Okay. Now if I come back out here and click on here, and from here, I can open the PDF. Well, looks like <laughs> no OCRable, um, OCRable text <laughs> is visible, but um, I can identify another one if need be. I just picked a terrible example, so I apologize. Exclude that. Um, let's find, oh, I have some great documents in here. What's this? And this might yield something a little bit better. So if I go ahead and filter by selection, now this one doesn't have any, any text, so if I TIFF convert it, even though I'm TIFF converting to easy SDK, I have to begin, run the TIFF conversion, and then do the OCR. So if you want to do the TIFF conversion prior to converting it to PDF, you can, but we are able to OCR PDFs as well. So um, um, and my personal preference is using Adobe, or uh, I'm sorry, Abbey Fine Reader in order to do so. So I'm going to choose that and click on begin, and that's going to OCR that document.
You can see it is OCRing it now as, as best as it can. And here it is. It doesn't look worth worth a darn. But if I open the PDF, you can see that I, I do have something in there, but it's not the greatest. And it looks like there could be some text down here somewhere. There it is. For competition, I could I could run it, but you can see that it's not the greatest quality, just because it was a terrible um, original um, file to begin with. But uh, you can see that you are able to create a searchable PDF from um, OCRing it. Um, what other questions are there for you? So you think we covered unique, so for uniqueness, we don't have to do the knots. It does it for us, uh, right. basically. Right. Okay. Yep. yep, you got it. Can I remove that? Does the first word, uh, does the first word get the document, uh, get the document? Back to Chad's example, um, I think Death Star was the first word and it showed a zero. Right. So um, Death Star can be in those records, but it's not unique. There isn't one record where that word is only in it, aside from all the other words in the list. So Death Star, oh, um, so if I run my searches here, um, and then I calculate my uniqueness, Death Star was not unique across any of the other. So Death Star was not contained as a single um, term that was not also containing skilling, boot, marble, or mabel, and so on and so forth. So in theory, oh, I have to, I have, to have at least two searches. So there we are, Death Star and Mabel are not contained within the same document. Therefore, Death Star has three unique hits. Or, yeah, they're, they're unique in, in three of those hits. If I uncheck this one and come up to Skilling, okay, does that kind of make sense? You have to have at least one, or at least two documents for, to calculate the uniqueness across it. Oh, what was that, what was that again? Okay, next question. Are you able to see the family size count for unique documents? And that was also contained um, in the uh, full text report. Uh, you do see um, unique documents, number family. As far as the family of the unique documents, that's a no. Thank you, Chad. What you, in, in theory, what you could do is you could you theoretically tag those documents. I don't have any tag fields, that's why, um, in this case. Um, but if you wanted to tag those documents and then return the, the, the parent-child relation, or the, parent-child attachments, so you, you can certainly do so. Thank you. Any on. way to save full text keywords to field from full text search report? The next one. Full text. Run that one by me again. Uh, I think they're asking if there's any way to save your keywords, your full text keywords, to a field from full text search report. There is not, no. Okay, thank you. What version of Internet Explorer do you recommend for tiffing HTML files? Um, version 9. 9 or, or higher, correct, Chad? Uh, I don't know if we've, well, I'm using, um, I use, what is this, I don't even know what version I'm running. I run 10, it, it, it's been working, it's been successful for me, but I have, um, my default browser is, um, Chrome, so, um, but it, I, it personally works just fine with, with uh, IE 10. It's, we're supported with 9 and 10. Okay. Um, if I have a non-searchable PDF and need to make them searchable, is there any advantage to using SDK to TIFF than OCR? Use the old way of TIFFing with LawDriver and OCR from TIFF. No, there's 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 no advantage one way or another. It's just all based upon preference. 
Uh, TIFFing is going to be obviously faster because you're creating an image versus a PDF. Uh, and then OCRing the image, um, you may get better results in that respect. But um, if you have extracted text already, it's easier to go directly to a searchable PDF that have the TIFF and then OCR. It's going to be it's going to eliminate that extra step for you and create that searchable PDF immediately. So you can essentially what I'm trying to get at is it's probably quicker on a workflow perspective to um, TIFF those extracted text documents immediately to PDF um, and then identify those documents that don't have that extracted text and TIFF and OCR those or PDF and OCR those. It, it's all based upon the, the, the desired output um, at the end. Okay. Um, will the, okay, if we load the PDF, will they be visible in the image viewer? Natively, no, unless, unless you've already converted them into PDFs. You got it. Okay, let's see here. Would PDFs be loaded from ED loader or from a load file for scans to PDFs? Um, uh, from ED if you're scanning to, to, to PDF or are they coming in as a scan? Maybe that's a, more of a, a question we should gear towards. You can import PDF as raw image. Yep. Yep, you can import a PDF as a raw image. Um, you just will not get the extracted text. <laughs> if the, I mean, if there is extracted text per se. So I mean, I've got here's some documents that are here, and these are all searchable. So if I click on begin, I would like to actually click on my root there. Raw image. Use this text yes, document. You do need the ED loader to get extracted text from PDFs. Right. Regardless of how you look at it. So this document is is, is essentially a, a searchable document, and I'll verify that for you. Searchable document. Um, but you can see it's bringing it as raw image. You do not get that text. tackle most of the questions there? I think we did. Um, let me just double check here. Uh, there is one last question. Hold on one second here. Okay, could we run could we run command to get extracted text when loading raw images? Are we talking um, text extractor? Maybe I can't recall whether. No, you can't. For raw images. No, you cannot run it against. Well, no, it does not work against raw images. Them being brought as as raw images, it, it doesn't ex it doesn't work that way. I mean, it's all based upon an a, an e doc. I mean, we can verify that. It doesn't bother me any. bring in this raw image, <clears throat> come back out here, Just bring in this tech doc here, and then you're saying you want to actually run this uh, um, text extractor off of that. Um, well, I'd have to add a tag to begin with. That's a no. Because the text X status does not equal C. Uh, 
believe. Is that all the questions that we, in theory, have? Yep, it looks like that is it for our webinar today. I don't see any other questions right now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let Elaine take that back, and um, <clears throat> she'll be able to show you the account individuals. Okay, I'll leave that up again. Sounds good. Oh, wrong person. One sec. Okay. And just to make sure, Tammy, Chad, you guys can see my screen now? Yes, we do. Yes, we can. Okay. And I'm just pulling up the, the account team info here again. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave this up for now, um, and if we do have any other additional questions that, that come through, we'll try and answer those. Um, but again, these are the account reps, depending on where your firm or your company is from. These are the individuals that you'd want to connect with regarding the new version of law. Um, so this concludes our webinar today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Chad and Tammy, as well. Um, so. Again, thanks for joining, and have a good day, everyone. And I'd like to also make a note here just to make sure that we're clear. Um, Donna Egan's email address, or I'm sorry, an email, but phone number has changed. So if you'd like to contact her, um, you can email her directly, or um, if you'd like her direct dial, um, we can get that to you um, outside of the webinar. We just need to update our PowerPoint um, after the webinar. So just wanted to point that out. If you want to contact her directly, you can email her, or you can contact myself or Elaine, and we'll be able to uh, give you her information. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.